Welcome, all you nice people out there. Welcome back to the West Coast with your boy Dusty, where it's hot. Oh my God, is it hot out here? <laughs> water. I need water. Deep water. Lots of it. Mmm. Mmm. Tasty. But man, it's been like a hundred plus here in San Jose for like three days. It doesn't do that very much. Uh, but you know what? We're gonna press on anyway. Press on anyway, because we're here for you. We're here for you now. And just if you were here to see Tabitha St. Germain, I'm very sorry for that. But Tabitha did contact me earlier this week and said that her vocal cords just have not recovered enough to be on the show today. So we are pushed her back to the second show in uh, just before BronyCon. So we moved her back a little bit. So uh, make sure you come during that one. The uh, schedule will be on the website. Uh, so, but in her stead, we do have two gentlemen from Everfree Northwest. You know them, we know them, they're awesome people. And that one would be Mr. Bajate. Hey, hey there. there. Oh yeah, vice chair himself, and also a VP of corporate for Everfree Northwest. And then Markarian, who I'm sure well, I will say the wrong name, your name wrong all night long, um, who is board president and CEO, also co-director of media for the Everfree Northwest Convention. Hello, gentlemen. Salutations, and you got my name right, Mark Harry. Oh, lovely. Maybe I'll get it wrong once more. I don't know. <laughs> so how are you gentlemen doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Psyched up. Sweet. We're only a few days away. Two days from you guys checking in the hotel, <laughs> and like three days from me being there, which is going to be awesome. Uh, July 4th weekend. Sweet. We're going to have fireworks. We're going to have this huge convention of fun. What else do you want to do on America's birthday? I swear to God. What else would you want to do? Nothing. Well, I don't know. Ponies? Ponies don't know. and fireworks. Puppy, like puppies that. and fireworks. There you go. <laughs> but, Johnny, you just, you, you, you like took a last minute down to, uh, down to Houston, right? I did. I don't know what the hell's wrong with me. You're actually down in Houston at the moment. I am currently Skyping in from Houston for the show, yeah. Yeah. Tell us a bit about uh, last weekend. Tell us a bit about uh, how that all went down. Well, I flew down here last second to Fiesta Equestria, the pony farm down here in Houston. And it was their first year here, and I have to say, holy crap, that was a fantastic job for a first year con. Awesome. Awesome. Well, this is you guys. You, I don't know how many meetups you had, but last year was your first year, right? Yeah. And you guys did a wonderful, <coughs> wonderful job last year. We had so much fun last year. Uh, so really looking forward to this one. And we moved down the hill a little bit. So we went up the hill and down the hill and met in the middle to this wonderful, uh, place. Tell us a bit, a bit about the venue. Well, the, uh, Seattle airport Hilton conference center, uh, has, I think over 40,000 square feet of event space. Um, it's, uh, where a lot of cons, uh, ended up like uh, rain first and Sakura con, uh, but for Sakuracon blew up so big that they had to use PAX's venue. Um, so one of the nice things, one of the greatest issues that, that we've been able to resolve this year is that of capacity. As you guys might have recalled from last year, we sold out not once, not twice, but three times in a row and had to expand to two properties you know, oh, yeah. across the street from each other. So this year, we've got a lot more space. And um, if you check out our YouTube channel we actually are, give you a little bit of a tour of the new venue kind of a sneak peek uh, myself and, and royal coat who's the the chair this year awesome yeah um and because tabitha couldn't make it uh because of her vocal cord issue you guys like stepped up to the plate and got andrea libman at the last minute tell me how that came about well um basically andrea andrea and tabitha have the same agent so we have a very good working relationship with him and and with them and uh, I think Andrea had a fantastic time, uh, you know, as we all did last mm -hmm. year. Absolutely. So I think that she saw that, you know, in the kind of in the spirit of the community that we were in need and that she'd, you know, love to come see us again and, and, and see and see the community and the fans. And, uh, you know, uh, our head of guest relations, uh, Spectrum Flash, was able to get this together very quickly. So uh, hats off to him. Good job, Spec. Awesome job, dude. So love Andrea. Love to, love to see her again. Um, guests <clears throat> on top of Andrea, we got Peter New, Andrew Francis, Michelle Kreber, Sibsi herself, Amy Keating Rogers, Andrea Libman. You know, last year 
we had all those wonderful guests that you guys brought in, and then people just showed up, right? Well, so, are, yeah. So is there any rumor, any rumors of other people who might be uh, just you know ghost in this convention might show up? Anything? Added? Well, we just officially announced the last minute guest about five minutes ago. <gasps> and who was that? That would be Raven Mollesy, also a storyboard artist for DHX. She worked on seasons two and three and Equestria Girls, yeah. as well as as well as Pound Puppies. And uh, like Sibzy and so many of the other artists at DHX, she is, uh, you know, from uh, originally from AKA Animation, working yes. on Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Ed, Ed, and Eddie. <clears throat> Love Raven. Raven's a wonderful, wonderful person. Great to see her again. So Raven's coming, people. So if you haven't figured out to get to, Quest, uh, to Everfree Northwest, now you got another reason to go. You get to see the wonderful Raven. Um, hey, you guys are having an art show this year. Right? Last year there wasn't an art show, was there? At least I don't remember one. Uh, so art show this year. Tell us uh, how that's going over. Are you getting a bunch of art in for the art show? Uh, any big name artists uh, we've heard of? Any idea? You know, I don't currently well, have data on that. I don't know if you did that. No data? Um, I heard the name Pixel Kitties tossed around. <gasps> um, oh, yeah. I'm sure John Joseco is supposed to be there. Oh, I got to take a drink. I'm sorry. I said his name. <laughs> mm. So Jose yeah, was, I was actually wondering, you know, it's like, should I have something here to be sipping on? Yes, you should. You got <laughs> You can't come to my program without something to sip on. Um, so we do. We do have an art show. If anybody's been to uh, a different type of conventions, like sci-fi or any of these conventions, they usually have one area set aside where all of the artists who are coming, or even artists who can't make it, can mail in their art and have it put in the art show for sale. <laughs> sometimes I'm not sure if this is an art show that has sales. But uh, be a wonderful place to check out um, some of the up-and-coming artists on top of our favorites like Pixel Kitties and John Hoseko. So if you're going, make sure you check that out. Um, any information on the PMV contest? <laughs> a little bit on the PMV contest. Do it. Um, it was going on Saturday morning in the, uh, if you look at our event schedule, in the Crystal, uh, Crystal Room. Mm -hmm. And this year, something a little different, we're also going to have a Pony Movie video category. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sweet. So be ready for that. We'll have music videos and movie videos to kind of uh, spread the love a little bit more and uh, have a few awesome prizes for that. Awesome. Get more people involved. Always better to get more people involved. More things to do. Um, and on top of more things to do, the Crystal Games Challenge. Now, I I went on the website and tried to decipher what the Crystal Games Challenge is, and I'm lost. Okay. It, it sounds to me that they're going to have a bunch of game developers come together and try to build a game over the weekend. At least that's what it yeah. sounds like to me. It's a game jam. You've heard one of those before. Yeah, game jam. So check it out. Poke your head into the win in into the room there when they're, they're trying to make their game and maybe give them a suggestion and then uh, see if it makes the game. Uh, that, would kind of, that would be kind of cool. Um, now, you guys had just announced this really cool idea. I'm going to run this down. Um, <coughs> the first ever Everfree Royal Court where three, three young fans get a chance to be the personal assistants to Twilight Sparkle herself for the weekend. Run this down for me. How's that going out? Oh, the coronation, you mean? Yeah. yeah okay, well, uh, the, the way I understand it is that uh, <clears throat> three very yucky, uh, very yucky, yeah. yeah, very yucky, yeah. Um, <laughs> three, three very lucky young foals uh, will receive in their swag bags at random Yes. Kind of like a golden ticket. The golden ticket. That invites them to the coronation. Yes. So, uh, as far as I... Is it, is it... It's not Twilight Sparkle, because we don't have uh, Terra this year. Okay. Um, was it... Um, Bajati, help me out here. information out for you. Okay, according to the website, it was Twilight Sparkle, so maybe... maybe. Something's going I on. think that might have been. I think that might have been a typo, and that it was for something else. But it could be. Um, yes, I, like I said, I I, ha I have a I have a, a an excuse here. Yes. <laughs> we, understand, we understand your excuse. Uh, We're not going to go into uh, it, but, uh, but no, no problem there. So, Bajati is is probably wildly trying to get on the website right now to give us some information, aren't you, Bajati? <laughs> trying to battle this wonderful human life, Sweet. I knew it. Uh, so let's go on to the next one. This one should be easy. 
Um, there are a ton of writing and music panels, tons of writing and music panels over, over the two, three days, but not much for art. Are we having a, a uh, we're just not getting the volunteers to do art panels? I think that it kind of went, I think we kind of went the other way this year as we, we felt like that writing and music, as far as the panels go, mm -hmm. were so underrepresented that people started focusing on them and, and, and just said, oh my God, we've really got to showcase writers. We have an incredibly passionate head of writing track this year. Yes. And, um, uh, and I think that's why we're seeing so many of them. Mm -hmm. uh, she works on the, the writing panel for, I think, Rainforest and uh, Further Confusion. Uh, but uh, as far as art, I think that it's, it's the art is kind of considered almost like a given because our, you know, this is a very visual fandom, it is. Uh, as well as a musical fandom too. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that would be my explanation. I think it just ended up that way because we were trying to compensate for that. Uh, our art track has some of the, the largest events that are going off to higher events, uh, such as the art shows we already mentioned, right. and we. Um, again, as we had last year, our arts and crafts room is mm -hmm. going um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for most of the day. And if you remember from last year, yep. uh, a lot of our special guests would even pop in every once in a while and draw, have their own hand at some arts. Mm -hmm. more, and of more, course, more of what I'm, I'm talking about is how-tos. Like having yeah. an artist up front on how to draw a pony or how to do vector art or how to do this or that. Having, having the arts and crafts room is awesome. <coughs> having the, the, the art show is awesome. But more there might be there right. might there might be a little bit of that at the storyboarder panel. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't I can't I can't guarantee that it's probably going to be mostly a Q and A. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you know, it's it's not to say that that, that one cannot ask. Okay. Uh, yeah. Part of that is just when we get applications for events, we take them as they come. Apparently, uh, not a lot of artists who felt like they um, wanted to show <laughs> show their stuff in a tutorial panel. So there we go. Uh, artists, our next year, get on it. Yeah. We need some panels on how to. John I think Jose, they're. I think they're John very Jose busy. Senko, I'm looking at you. I think. I think they're very busy in our. Uh, in in our in our dealers hall. Uh, they are uh, applying their wonderful wares. A lot of wonderful vendors this year. Uh, anybody? You guys know any some of the some of the vendors we should be looking forward to other than John Hosek? Point oh, Well, we have near to I think almost seventy vendors. Seventy there. vendors this year. Yeah, it's at least sixty. I know that. Um, nice. Soon like this vendor hall. And got yeah, some of your favorites uh, from uh, your conventions, uh, some affiliate partners to all favorite artists like JJ and his, people like the yeah, Brony bringing his fantastic jewelry. Oh yes, isn't uh, Otaku? Isn't isn't Chris? Uh, isn't Otaku Squirrel going to be coming back? I believe he is, and our and... cosmic unicorn who did our absolutely amazing, spectacular con book cover last week. Yes, absolutely. Cosmic Unicorn lives on a, on a different planet where everything is beautiful. Everything. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, charity. And charity auction. Charity auction was oh. a huge highlight from last year. Wonderful time last year. Um, how are things shaping up this year? You guys get anything really cool we should be looking forward to? Um, I'm not sure if we're allowed to <gasps> divulge that yet, but I will say, every pony, don't disappoint us. 13,525. Yes. I want to make that look like pocket change this year. Yes, pocket change. Absolutely. So, and later in this program, we're going to get on that. So, we'll talk about it in a little bit. Um, let's see. Uh, we got that, we got that, we got that. We talked about that. Uh, toy drive. So, we got a toy drive this year, I understand, where all the people that come to the convention can bring an unwrapped toy in its original packaging and put it in a barrel. And those toys will be taken over to the uh, to the Seattle Children's Hospital. Is that correct? Correct. That is correct. They could always they're always happy for anything that's you know anything that's packaged. Uh, stuffed animals are not allowed. Unfortunately, no plushes. No plushes. Uh, because they're they're, they're a contamination risk. Right. But um, they're just too cute. They're not allowed in. Mm -hmm. um, the um, you know uh, games are always good. If anyone has like any uh, wrapped. Uh, like PS2 or Wii games, those are always really appreciated. Um, of course, ponies, 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 and more ponies yes. um, are, are always appreciated yes. as well. Brushable, so. brushable ponies in the small pa packages are really cheap, really inexpensive. So if you're coming to Everfree Northwest, get one from Target and bring it and put it in the bin. 
is really inexpensive and it's a good thing to do because someone would be very happy to have that brushable pony when they don't have anything. Um, cosplay. Plenty of costuming going on. Not only do we have, you know, a cosplay contest, but we actually have a panel on how-to. Yes, ma'am? I believe we do. So the uh, let's see, let's get to something everybody knows about pony stock. The big, uh, the, the big uh, musical extravaganza. Well, if you remember our headliner from last year, yeah, the 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 one, the only Michelle Kreber. Michelle Kreber, yes, who will be uh, not only performing at Everfree Northwest. Mm -hmm. But selling her new CD, Timeless, yes. Songs of a Century. Mm -hmm. Please pick one up. It's awesome. Yes, it is. And not only that, but we have our very own Everfree Northwest band, Don and the Cutie Mark Crusaders. Ooh. Who were uh, the headliners of our Ele Elements of Melody concert, uh, concert at the Vera Project mm -hmm. in the spring. Cool. Very cool. Uh, that is sweet. So we're going to have, that's going to be split up like it does last year. We're going to have like acoustic and, and other music on one night. We're going to have electronica the other night, correct? I believe so. But Dustin, did you uh, happen to catch last week's announcement of the, the recent community musician that was added to our list? Oh, you mean that dead guy from Israel? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Would he be the living tombstone? Living Tombstone will be coming to Everfree Northwest this year. That is correct, and it will be his first West Coast appearance. He's yes. such a nice young man. Yes, he is. I'm personally super excited to host him this year. He is going to the house. It's going to be great, because I, I spent a little bit of time with him at BronyCon last year, but he was so run around by you know people filming him or, or, or doing panels or anything. I didn't get a lot of time to spend to talk to him, so hopefully I can talk to him this year. And uh, and say hey and, and see what's going on with the flight. It'd be awesome. Oh yeah. Did you say Did you say he's staying with you? No. Pajati. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I wish he was staying with me, but no. I did not say that. But that would be fantastic. Wouldn't it? Sweet. Oh, dude. So let's see. I am actually out of questions. Is there anything you guys want to to say? Well, I can it's tell an you. Open floor tell you, at this point. There is there is one thing I can tell you about definitively. Do it. Because I've been involved in it. Yes is that uh, the one and only, or rather the two and only, Sherclop Pones will be returning yeah. to Everfree Northwest. Mm -hmm. um, and once again, hosting a panel at, uh, at the convention. And not only that, but they will be debuting a brand new full-length episode, not just a short this <gasps> time. Everfree exclusive. Nice. Absolutely awesome. Uh, let's see, what else is going on? The... Let's see, so sure clock phones. Penstroke, I think, is going to be there, correct? Yep. So Penstroke's going to be there. We know anything about new uh, new exclusive Free Northwest story, maybe? Or is he just going to be working the, working the, uh, uh, the scene on what's going on, walking around, signing autographs, and <laughs> doing panels? No, I wish I could tell you if there was some new thing. <laughs> Dude, Penstroke, you need to do some better advertising, buddy. Maybe, we'll, maybe I'll get him on the program. Hey, Pen, if you're watching. So, with that, we're going to go to... You know what? I think we're going to world premiere my song. Let's do it. We're going to world premiere my song right now. So, we have a world premiere song that is between myself and Anita Heed who contacted me about a mm, month and a half ago and said, Hey, Dusty, why don't we sing a duet together? I was like, well, why not? And I'm like bouncing around inside going, I nearly he does me to sing with her. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so we came up with this wonderful song idea. And uh, it, we just finished it maybe this week. And right here for you right now. World premiere. I mean, myself and Anili He, the song's name is Remind Me. So, hopefully you enjoy it.
didn't care if Pony stayed. We pulled pranks in a crowd somewhere. No pony knew what we were up to. It's hard to believe that was me and you. Now we keep saying that we're okay. A special some pony is always great. Hearts and Who's Day was a while ago. Cheer, I want you to know. It's been so long, my apple tree. The way I used to call Cheer Lee. Felt bad cause you missed your flight At that, that moment it felt so right Do you remember how we used to be? I called you Snoopy Doopy and you said it back to me Remind me, baby, remind me So sweet friend, so much fun My special son And how did you like that, people? Threw a little country curveball at you, and hopefully you enjoyed that. So the, uh, you know, it, it's awesome to, that she came to me and said, let's do something, and it's really, you know, really cool that she did, and hopefully we can do some more in the future. And we're back. We're back with the guys, Bajate and Markarian, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, music, music Equestria. Music Equestria is mm -hmm. coming up. And uh, talking a little bit about that, Mr. B. All right. Well, Music Westria is the first ever cross country music tour that this community has put on. Mm -hmm. And I, I had this in my mind after uh, Ever Free last year um, because I thought that uh, this community needed a little more of a, a push for live music. And uh, um, it finally came together this year after talking to a lot of musicians that performed last year at Ever Free and who are performing this year at Ever Free. And we signed in, uh, signed on some of the coolest musicians to bring across the country with us. Cool. Such as, you want to hear the performer? Do it. Automatic Jack, 
John DeVore, as Arthurian uh, mentioned, one of our locals. Mm-hmm. Benny. Mike the Microphone. Mike the Mike, yeah. Tony One Kenobi. Mm-hmm. Silva Hound. Silva. Tarby, who is also nearby in uh, Seattle these days. And Replacer. Ooh, got Replacer too. Nice. Former Replacer in from New Zealand to come all the way across the country with us. Sweet. What's the. Uh, do you have a, uh, a schedule yet? Uh, yes, we. So far, have about I think seven venues secured and a few more in the works. Okay. Um, I think most most of all of these guys will be playing at Everfree Northwest. And right after the convention, we'll be heading down to Portland mm-hmm. on Friday night. Uh, then down to Hollywood, Las Vegas, Phoenix, Houston. We'll be making our way down to Jacksonville in the southeast, and then up the east coast to BronyCon mm-hmm. and Cambridge right afterwards. Wow. We're also looking for shows such as New York City, Chicago, mm-hmm. New Orleans, and yeah, wherever else you find a place to play. Sweet. Cross bringing bringing the music to the people. Oh yeah, so Musicwestria, look it up. Musicwestria.com, we're on Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, all your favorite social networks. Check it out, people. Uh, so at that point, we're going to go through. I'm going to run through the upcoming conventions uh, list. As to uh, what you out there, if it's close to you, go because going to a pony convention is awesome and it's a lot of fun. So, of course, hey, next weekend, uh, Everfree Northwest, and that is going to be Andrea Libman, Sipsy, Amy Keating Rogers, Michelle Kriebetter, Andrew Francis, and Peter New. So, if you can get there, get there because it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Sweet Apple Acres Con, and that is July 12th through 14th in Nashville, Tennessee, and Michael Dangerfield, Brayburn himself, is going to be there. Lee Tokar is going to be there, and Michelle Krieber will be there. Then BronyCon is going to be August 2nd through 4th in Baltimore. And, man, do they have a list. And they have M.A. Larson, Nicole Oliver, Amy King Rogers, Brenda Critchlow, Kathy Westluck, Michelle Krieber again, Lee Tokar, Katie Cook, Andy Price, and Heather Breckel from the MLP Comics will be there. So if you love comics, uh, check it out and get to BronyCon in Baltimore. Um, in Europe... Europe has some great stuff going on. Galacon's coming up August 3rd through 4th in Ludwigburg, Germany. Uh, Andrew Lippmann is going to be there. Peter New's going to be there. My, my new honey, Anneli Heed's going to be there. Michael Pan, who's the German Discord, which is probably a lot of fun to listen to. And Julie Vasquez, French Rarity, is going to be there. Bazayam, so they got her. Buck. Buck is coming up August 23rd through 25th in Manchester, UK. Cindy Morrow. And they also just announced Michelle Krieber is going to be there. So, uh, and also for music, they got the Living Tombstone, Acoustic Brony, Glaze, General Mumble, and lots more are going to be going to Buck. Uh, myself, myself, my appearances, I'm going to be, of course, at Everfree Northwest. I'll be doing floor reporting from Everfree Northwest uh, with the Everfree Network. Uh, we're also going to have going to Sack Brony Expo, which is September 14th. I'll be a guest along with Apple Cider. From the Bronyville podcast uh, and uh, and Canterlot Con in Toronto, Ontario, November sixteenth and seventeenth, I will be a guest there along with Hot Diggy Demon and Jesse Nowak, who is the female voice of Vinyl Scratch. So that is the convention rundown. Dang. Uh, yes, lots coming up. Lots going to have some fun. Charity, <laughs> charity time. So. The uh, charity for Nicole Oliver Heart and Stroke Foundation in uh, Yukon, BC. We raised six hundred eighty-one dollars for that. We beat the five hundred dollar prize, so we are have the trading card box is going to be part of this giveaway. Um, so for the Talking Celestia, signed by Miss Nicole Oliver, right there, <laughs> and this box. Of trading cards, season two. I have a hat full of names. What do you know? Right here. Hmm. Shake them up a little bit. And draw one out. And we'll find out who gets the giveaway this week. It will be Subtle Wind. Subtle Wind, you get those prizes right there. So Oh my god, you guys. Oh my god, you guys. It's awesome. Now, now that that's it. We got a surprise for our friends at Everfree Northwest. This week's charity is going to be Seattle Children's Hospital Foundation. And what? Yes. 
So, the two weeks from now until the next show, if you can't get to Everfree Northwest and you want to help them out with the charity, you can go to our webpage and you can click on the little box that takes you to the charity. If you give five bucks, you get into the giveaway for awesome, fabulous prizes. And those, this time, will be... <clears throat> I got them right here. We got this wonderful Vinyl Scratch Beanie. It's cool. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. And then we got a new set of socks, which just came out at Hot Topic. And you got, of course, Rainbow Dash. And you got the Derpy Muffins. And those are guys' crew socks right there. And I couldn't pass this up. I, I know this is sort of like for girls, but it's this really cool My Little Pony, like, wallet thing. And it's really cool. It's got the girls on one side. It's got My Little Pony on the other side. You open it up, and it's got a place for your change. you got a place for your bills. you got a place for... Oh, it's really cool. So... That is also there. Now, that's the regular price. If we beat $500 this time, I'm going to reach over here buying everything. Oh, what do I got back here? I got another box of Season 2 trading cards. So, if we beat $500, this is up for the giveaway. But you got to beat $500. So, get all your friends to go to manliestbrony.com. Click on the link, follow the instructions. You have to register at Manless Brony, and then register over there with the same name so I know who you are. Because for Brenda Critchlow's charity, I called the name, and he's not on my website. I can't get a hold of you. I don't know who you are. So guess what? We're going to draw that one again next week. So all you people who thought you were out of it are back in it. So we're going to draw that one again with everybody who's been on my website and registered. So, with that, charity's over for the week. So, I want to, let's see, I want to bring in my good pal and yours, Screwball. How's it going? Oh, there he is. <laughs> How you doing, Scurry? Ooh, I just banged my knee on my desk. <laughs> ooh, um, my screwball. it's, well, it's Canada Day today, so I, I've been partying a You've lot. been partying hard, haven't you? Oh, I was working actually, so <laughs> we've been you know, partying at work. To, when it comes to ponies, every day is Canada Day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pretty much. I have to agree. Canada Day for everybody. Everybody. I've seen a lot of Canadian flags out and about. It's not just me that likes to wear them as capes, you know. I've seen quite a few already. <laughs> you know, Screwball, I own more can Canadian flags than American flags. You're kidding. No, two to one. Wow. I have two Canadian flags <laughs> and one American flag. So. Well, then you should wear those or something or, or hang them out. Or... I, I should, you know what? I, I should bring one for you, but it's the giant national size, and you'd probably use it as a bedspread. You know what? <laughs> that sounds good. Do it. Bring it. <laughs> I'll make sure I pack it for this week. We'll <laughs> see each other on Thursday. So how's the chatty box? I said it again. Yeah, it's been I pretty said well. chatty box, uh, didn't I? You did say chatty box. Sandra? What is this? Dusty. <laughs> girls are rubbing off on me again, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Pegasus Sisters Live. Rubbing off on me. Yeah, we're going to be Pegasus Sisters Live eventually if that keeps up. Come on, yeah, Dusty. I know. <laughs> I know. So, how's, how's the chat room going? Oh, it's been going good. I'll bring up the questions. Um, question. So this one is actually from Firemane. Uh, question for all. Any suggestions to get over con crud fast? Lots of water and lots of sleep. Lots of water, lots of vitamin C. Mm -hmm. um, and um, avoid dairy products. Avoid cheeses, milks, and anything with sugar in it. So eat a lot of protein and fiber. And, uh, and, and don't drink your Ovaltine because it's full of sugar. That's true. Gives me all the vitamins. And midday naps are really pleasant. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have been getting con credit from uh, Fiesta Equestria, oh, so they're trying to man. they're trying to kick it before uh, every Northwest. <laughs> yeah, I was one of them. I have to admit. <laughs> yes. Don't give it to me. No, I hope yeah. I'd be very My upset. Music. I I I don't see. I've all the conventions I went to. I've never caught con cred once yet. So I plan to keep that record. Um. Also from Fireman for Bajati, uh, how awesome was the Hey Ocean concert? 
Oh man, oh, some man. people might have seen me on the screen. So they know how awesome the Haitian concert was. <laughs> I saw I saw I saw Kelly Metzger and Marika Hendricks dancing their tails off on camera. Oh, not, I was at at side stage. It was freaking awesome. To watch. No, that was spectacular. All the VAs came in to listen to that, uh, which is fantastic because Ashley, being the VA herself, yep. there's a bunch of friends kind of standing at the side of the stage. <laughs> Absolutely, party, awesome concert. Sweet. What was the what was the set list? Like, you want me to just remember the songs off head? Did they play uh, Islands? <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they oh, played a lot. Yeah, they played the Islands. I love that song. Going to California. Oh, definitely. Um, oh yeah, lots of really yeah. good stuff. A lot of the favorites from Hey Ocean's new album is in yeah. stores. Check it out on the website HeyOcean.com. Yes. You know, there, there was a, um, there was a, when, when uh, Bajadi and I went to go see them in Vancouver, um, there was a, somebody in the, in the audience, like at the front part right by the stage, unfolded this huge banner that said, your love is like a big blue rainbow dash. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's cool. That's cute. <laughs> Got the energy uh, of was the best I've ever seen any day of some concert. Sweet. So wow. Of fans were honestly huge fans of music. Hmm. Hmm. Ooh. Hmm. So this one is from Flare Runner. Uh, to all, what advice uh, would you give to non-American people flying to cons that have never been to the States? Um, I can, I can tell you that um, it is no better way to experience another country because you know when you're coming to a fan convention you're already with family yep. you can plug in basically mm -hmm. and if you are if you've never been to the United States it doesn't matter you're with other pony fans you're with other bronies it's you know and they're the ones who can be your you know your cultural liaisons not you know not some tour guide or you know uh, you know Space Needle was built for the 1964 World's Fair I mean it's you know you're going to have people who really not only know the area but you know, have an interest in you because mm -hmm. you're one of them. If you can get down to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame down there, down by Space Needle, awesome, awesome place. We went last year. Wonderful place to go. Just go check that out. Sweet. Next. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I want to add on to that question. Um, when when traveling to the states from another country, passport. <laughs> passport. Always yes. have a passport. <laughs> And, and no better way than flying. You could drive, sure, but it depends on your location. Um, oh, and, uh, uh, and, be, and be nice. Be nice and smile. It, gets, it goes a long way. It goes a long way. Ooh, so, one second. I'm just gathering up. Where the heck did I put you? Uh, oh, okay. So, um, this one's from Music Notes. Uh, question is... Uh, well, first, he's like, say, I also would like to say to Dusty, I sent you a letter a few, uh, with a few questions. I want to say thank you for applying. Oh. And uh, also his question is for Dusty, what's the best advice you received? The best advice I ever received? Hmm. Yeah. Wow. I'm 45 years old. I got a lot of advice in my life. Um, <laughs> um, God, you look young for 45, and I'm not just saying that. Really? Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Uh, probably the best piece of advice I was ever given is that, you know, trying to trying to figure out how I should put it. Um, you only go around once. Really, I mean, don't don't not do something because you're embarrassed by it, or you're you don't think you can do it, or you let somebody else tell you you can't because then you never do sure you might fail sure but basically you're just learning how not to do it and do it a different way next time and probably it won't fail i i all these great people in this fandom that play music have inspired <coughs> me to pick up the bass guitar and i practiced my butt off for 2 months april may june comes up and my teacher says, why don't you show up to the student jam session? 
with a band. I've never played in a band in my life. I've sang a bit, but I've never played in a band. So I go there. My teacher doesn't show up, which is like, oh my god, my teacher's not even here. And I've been playing this one song. One song for like two and a half months. Sunshine of Your Love. And I go up there, and the guy says, okay, what do you want to play? I say, I'll, I'll play Sunshine. So sure enough, I get to do, 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 bonk. And I'm like, oh, I'm in front of like 50 people in a room. I'm like, oh, oh my God, I, wrong note. Keep going. Do, do, do. And then for three stanzas, I was perfect. But if I'd quit and walked off the stage, I never would have had the feeling of accomplishment of, oh, I can play this. Oh, this is a lot of fun to play with some people. I need to practice more. You know, I've been playing the piano for 21 years. Yeah. And not a single one of my performances is perfect. No. Not a single one of my performances is really, you know, 100% like satisfying right. to me. But I'll tell you what is satisfying is knowing that I tried and knowing that I put it out there. Yep. And, you know, you're never going to get any better unless you try. So, and you know what? Embarrassment is fleeting. You get over it. Just do it. You know, I never would have became a motorcycle mechanic if I hadn't gone to school. I never, if I had never tried. One of the, one of the greatest autobiographies out there is Valentino Rossi's. <coughs> what if I'd never tried it? Pick it up. It's really a great read. So. Next. Hmm. Ah, so this one is from. Sorry if I'm just very slow today. It is unbelievably hot in my room right now. <laughs> Uh, oof, so this one is from uh, Luminaire to to the guests. New Lunar Republic or Solar Empire? You know, we got that question at our VA panel last year. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm going to echo uh, Nicole's answer to this. Mm -hmm. Is that, you know, why, why, why can't we all just, why can't we all just get along and, and learn to live, uh, live together? Come on, people. It's the first episode. The first episode, the, the conflict has been resolved. Kumbaya. Um, By that, he means the new Lunar Republic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have, there are members of my board of directors who, um, <laughs> who might harm me if I didn't say new Lunar Republic. <laughs> and, a lot of people, and a lot of people assume, that, and, and, and a lot of people, you know, think because of Monument that that's like, that that's like the anthem for you know for for that sentiment. I I won't speak to that, but I will speak to the fact that that uh, uh, I can definitely see where Luna would be best pony. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Next. <clears throat> uh, so this one is from Chris Sargent. Uh, question for all of you guys: Do you all plan on stopping by Mike, Alex, mine, and Tombstone's party? Hey Chris, and, heck yeah! Uh, if if, if it's going to be as wild as I, that. if it's going to be, be as wild as I think I as, as I think it is, I hopefully I won't be there flanked with two hotel uh, staff. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, yes, absolutely, love to check that out. Um, and I can't promise that uh, uh, that some of our VIP guests might not want in on that too. Mm -hmm. I know Sarge, he puts up a fantastic party. Yes. And keeps the noise level at a perfect volume so they never get any complaints. He does do a good job at it. <laughs> Definitely. I'm going to that. I gotta make sure I go to that. Yep. It's something you can't really miss. <laughs> um, so this one is from Draco. Uh, question. Um, being so close to the, yeah, to the headquarters of Penny Arcade, Valve, Nintendo of America, and Xbox, do you think they could influence an epic game room for your convention? Well, um, that is an interesting question. Um, I have, uh, you know, our, <clears throat> I went to school with our, uh, one of our gaming leads, uh, Ludric Padeus, and, uh, and I'm also good friends with, the, with his boss, uh, Ursa, Ursa Minor. And, um, we, uh, I, I, I recently con uh, concluded a, a game design and certification program, and you know, uh, one of our instructors was work working for Wizards of the Coast. The other one was for Microsoft, and uh, they were very impressed with Everfree Northwest and the Brony community, and uh, 
you know, I think they've been telling a lot of people about it. So you never know who might show up. Also, um, you know, we all know that Gabe Newell is a, a fan of, uh, of this particular program. And uh, he doesn't have very far to go to take, uh, take his family to enjoy it. That's all I can say. That's true. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, ooh. <sighs> okay. <laughs> um, so this one is from Judge Justice! <laughs> I, I almost lost half my energy just doing that. <laughs> superhero. What does James want to know this week? Um, actually, there's there's one, there's two things. One, and this is actually an announcement. Uh, it's actually his birthday this Friday. What? Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. That is cool. Happy birthday to you, James. That is awesome. Happy birthday, indeed, in the future. Yeah. And I gotta say it again: when it is your birthday? Um, uh, and a question he likes to ask is, how can I celebrate my birthday in a very manly way? Hmm. Very manly way. Well, you could sit down and rent RoboCop, and <laughs> you could rent uh, Terminator Two. Terminator Two. You could rent Aliens. Aliens. Conan the Barbarian. <laughs> And sit down and Fight have, Club. At Fight Club. And have a movie extravaganza while having a steak dinner, medium rare, Ooh. with mushrooms on the side. Oh and man. Mashed potatoes with gravy. And a tall soda, because I know you're not twenty one yet. Uh, <laughs> and sit there and basically just draw in the manliness from the movies and the meal, and sit there, and when you're done, pat your belly really hot, loudly, and, and burp. Well, so, for, so much for the convention, that's what me and Bajadi will be doing this well, Friday. there you go. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> done. Oh my goodness. You know, you know what? what? I, I think I'm gonna have that happen for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome. There you go. Um... Oh, goodness. Uh, so this one is from uh, Shakira Speeder. Uh, question is, if it's possible to send slash mail... Oh, this is for you guys there, for North, uh, Northwest, by the way. If it's possible to send slash mail you fan art also signed, could you auction it for the chosen charity at the convention? I believe we are still taking charity auction submissions. The best uh, course of action I would recommend is to send an email to charity at everfreenw.com where our uh, tireless charity lead going once. We'll uh, look it over and see what he can do. Yes. <clears throat> That's awesome. Uh, so this one is from Storm Shield. Question for Destiny Screwball. Will you two be having any meet and greets at Everfree Northwest? Um, probably not. Um, I'm going to be doing floor reporting for uh, Everfree Network, so I'll be in, out and about. Um, I'm sure I'll grab Screwy for some of that time. Um, we were never asked by the convention to sit down and, and have a meet and greet with anybody. So it's, yeah, it's sort of like, okay, uh, we're just, okay. we're just showing up. I mean, I That's didn't, what I didn't, we didn't even get listed on the community guest page. I mean, I'm, I'm upset. <laughs> I'm upset. I really am. Uh, that's what being great is. I thought, okay, yeah, you'll just see me destroy my stuff all over the place. So yeah, you yeah. see me you just, know, just look for the Look for the Canadian yeah, flag yes. waving in the breeze as he runs up the hill. I'm not going to wear that during uh, your um, Independence Day, though, because I'm pretty sure I'm going to get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. You'll be okay. We'll be around. <laughs> we'll be around. So if you see us, you know, grab us together, get a picture, get something signed, ask a question. You know, we're pretty likable guys, and we'll, we'll, we, give every, we give up our time at, at all times. We, we don't have well, to have it. Are you getting married again? 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 Yeah, was I ever married? <laughs> huh? Wasn't, oh no, were you, are you going to be marrying any two people again? Oh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. If somebody comes up to me and Reverend. says, could you marry us? I might do that. Just have the have the manliest wedding right then and there? There you go. <laughs> okay, that would be cool. I could totally see you being, uh, I could totally see you doing that, Dusty. <laughs> I'm sure me... Oh, I'm sure me and Snowflake are going to have the manliest bro in the world again. 
Absolutely. Oh man, when I saw him last time, we did the uh, we did the sunshine sunshine uh, dance. That was fun. No mm-hmm. flaws. We did it perfectly. I'm like, this just made, this just you, made the convention. <laughs> she, you need to make sure you grab Raven for that uh, yes. for that bro huff because she was one of the she was the border on that episode. Yes, snowflake. <clears throat> oh, I can't believe that I get to see Raven again. Yeah, uh, gonna be awesome. <laughs> Uh, so this one is from Kello. Uh, question for all. Ooh, yummy. Uh, best kind of cake. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Carrot cake, hands down. That's good. That's good. That's good. That, that, you know what? That's pretty good. I love carrot cake. That's pretty good. Especially where it has a little icing carrot on it. It has to have a little. little yep. Carrot. You gotta have the icing carrot on. Um, oh. I'm thinking. <laughs> Baby cakes and best cakes. What? The baby cakes are best cakes. Baby cakes? Uh, so Mrs. Cakes, children. Oh, I oh, thought you were talking about like Brad Neely baby cakes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where you were going, Brajati, but it's like, whoa, what? <laughs> you know uh, what mine is? What? I don't mind. Mm-hmm. Dirt cake. Dirt? Is that what they eat in Canada? It's uh, what it is. It's basically like chocolate uh, pudding slash uh, chocolate cake. Uh, that they put like a bunch of they put into a actual like bucket, mm-hmm. and they'll put like a little shovel in there and a bunch of gummy worms pop pop popping out of the uh, Oreo layer on top, mm-hmm. and uh, it looks like uh, just a bucket with dirt inside of it, but it's edible and it's very yummy. <laughs> you, you know what? You know what, Screwball? I can see you running around the restaurant with this in your hands, going, "I got a bucket of dirt! I got a bucket of dirt! I got a bucket of dirt!" <laughs> I can see it. You know what? Wait, you guys don't even have dirt cake in the in the states? No, we call it like lava cake. <gasps> okay. <laughs> um, mm. I like it, strawberry. You probably use a few less letters to spell it. I like strawberry shortcake. I just do. It's it's awesome stuff. So you like a show for girls? Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. It's the manly thing to do. Yeah. Next. <laughs> Uh, where did I? Oh, so this one's from DJ Midley to Bajati. On a scale of one to ten, how dead are you after Fiesta Equestria? Oh, I'm so dead right now, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you can probably tell this interview. Yeah, because you ain't saying nothing. <laughs> are you a zombie pony? Are you a zombie I'm pony? A zombie pony. Uh, yeah, I got sick on Saturday and I'm still recovering. I apologize. <laughs> I feel I feel the sense of dead right now. It's because his heat. <laughs> yep. I feel like the Walking Dead with this. Uh, also from <laughs> T.J. Melton. Medley. Oh, say again. I said I, I said I'm you know, <clears throat> and I'm here in Seattle, not far from you. I'm melting. It's like, you know, it's got to oh be like God. 33 degrees in here. Yeah, uh, I uh, I heard I, I was uh, watching the news with my dad, and I saw there was heat warnings going on for Seattle. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh goodness! And I, no, I, 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 I I do want to make sure every pony knows that um, we are actually looking at much more, much more mild temperatures uh, during the con. So I think that I think the weather is getting its worst out of the way at the beginning of the week, so you guys can just enjoy it that when you're here. Nice. That's good. If it does change it, hydration, it's DJ Midley actually. Because I just See I saw I have a message to DJ Midley. I found a uh, really awesome gift of one of his little uh, side DJ performances next to the main stage. Um, I believe it was Peter New that posted a Vine actually. Mm-hmm. Ah, so check his Vine stream. Um, it, it's pretty spectacular. A couple bronies break dancing in front of DJ Midley's set. Cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, also from DJ, he's <laughs> asking, on a scale of 1 to 10, how willing would you be able to book me for a free Northwest? <laughs> Maybe I love you. <laughs> but you no. put a little winky face. <laughs> you know what, guys? I'm going to go grab a fan. Do it. Do it. Just... Yeah, isn't it what? I, I don't want to translate because I know Ben uh, put the Celsius, but I think it's like Upwards to ninety degrees or so in Seattle right now. Yeah. yeah, it's actually it's a that's the exact temperature I'm currently having right now as well as like thirty thirty five roughly, and 
I made my room as dark as possible, but it's not helping. The heat's still yeah, it's, somehow it's, getting in it's, here. It's pretty nasty in the house here, too. And I'm downstairs, where it's actually cooler than upstairs. But it's like... Well, I guess I'm not missing too much, then, because I'm still in Houston. Man. It's about the same. Yep. <laughs> Next question. So this one is from... Dear Lord, I have no idea how to say this name, and this is going to be ridiculous for me to try to say it. Uh, Takaset. Takasetsukuga. <laughs> uh, that's some kind of Japanese name, I'm pretty sure. Um, question is, hey guys, have you seen MLP in Japanese on TV Tokyo yet? Yes. Yes, I can. I have songs. Yes, I catch it every now and then. The song What's it like? Of- it okay, I want to apologize in advance for the wind noise, because, my God, it's just... it's this is The heat is intense here, like camping. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even hear it. The, the question, the question has been posed. Have you seen the Japanese uh, version of MLP yet? Uh, just the first episode. I was, I was really digging it. Um, except, isn't like the the winter wrap up episode? Don't they pretty much just speak the uh, the whole song? I I don't know. I didn't see the winter wrap up episode. I heard that. I heard about that. That was disappointing. And- Looking forward to that one. Hmm. Didn't and someone was success saying? Just come out? I didn't, think. Didn't suited for success just come out? I think so. Yeah, I'll have to catch that one on online. That's the episode that got me into ponies. Yeah. That's the one that hooked me. So I was into it, but then as soon as that one happened, I was done. Done. <laughs> Ooh, so this one is from Kibby the Great. Uh, a question to everyone. Uh, will you guys be watching any fireworks shows this week? You know it. If we can find one. I'm totally watching one tonight. <laughs> I don't know how many I you know, we're all gonna be at the uh we're all gonna be at the venue getting set up. Um so I'm not sure uh you know how close they can have fireworks to the airport, but we'll see what we can see. By the way, uh, besides Independence Day, uh, I don't know if it's been said yet, but Happy Canada Day, everyone. Yes, it has been said. Happy Canada Day. Thank oh. you. Okay. <laughs> Says the only Canadian here. <laughs> I hope you're having fun. Oh, the Johnny's yeah, an honorary well. Canadian. I like this. <laughs> well, yeah, totally. I am, too, yeah, because can... part of my family is French-Canadian. Aw. <laughs> so you can name blood in you. It was, it was Bajati who took me to, to Vancouver for the first time. Mm. And he's like, let's, let, let's go to the Canby Hostel. This is really great. <laughs> cool. Vancouver is definitely one of the best places to see in I Canada. I'm going to talk to you, Bajati, for places to stay in Vancouver, because I want to ride the bike up there later this year. So. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Places to stay. Cool. Bajati, Bajati, Bajati stays in only the finest five-star youth hostels. Nice. That was only two years ago. Now I have. <laughs> Next. Ooh, so this one's from Gavin Jab. A uh, question is for you guys. Uh, what was the hardest thing about managing a con? Oh, wow. That, that's a question right there. That, that is a question. Hurting cash. This year, um, thankfully, that's actually it's, it's good and bad. Uh, delegation of responsibility. Super, super tough. Super tough, but absolutely essential to run a good convention. It's something we didn't have enough of last year. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a. It, it really depends on who you ask. I mean, if you ask, um, if you ask Don Devore, he'll tell you, well, it's you know running all this cable. If you ask me, it's like, well, you know, um, you know, trying to get the board of directors to agree on you know this, anything, that, and the other. Anything. You know, if you ask. If you ask Royal Code, he'll be like, God, everything. So it depends on who you ask at what time. But I would say the hardest thing is probably just not disappointing anyone. Because, you know, we are always aware that this is so important. This means the world to so many more people than just us. um, That we really want to make it the best event possible. And it's not, you know, a business to us. It's not... You know, uh, you know, we're not in it for the money because, trust me, none of us have a penny after it's done. Um, we're in it because we just want to see you guys have a good time and and to be with the community. Yeah, one of the most difficult things maintain your sanity and 
uh, not burning out because you're working so hard all year round and kind of behind the scenes. You're not really in the spotlight getting thanked out as much as we can think about. We're just working as hard as we can to put on an amazing show for you guys. And it, it all comes together on that last weekend. We all celebrate afterwards and sleep for three full weeks. They take about four weeks off and do it again. Yeah, unless you're me and you're extra insane and decide to go on a music tour for a month and then go to another convention and then maybe have a couple weeks before you start school again. Yeah. Oh, yeah, see, Bajati just threw Bajati is just throwing his candle in the incinerator. Yeah, there's, there's nothing left of that candle. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> Bring the candle at all dimensions. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to... Oh, there it is. Uh, I have to rinse one up, too, from Gavin Job. Question for all. Have you all watched Equestria Girls? And if so, what's your opinions? I haven't. Yeah, I liked it. I want to see it so bad. I have not I had give any spoilers. All, I've, all I've seen is the uh, song, the uh, Help Twilight Crown song. Yeah, Help Twilight uh, Crown. And it was wonderful. You mean the cheer one? Yeah. yeah. That was actually called Equestria Girls. Yeah. I uh, I like the movie. I had a couple of little problems with it, but it's it, I, I basically put that to these girls are in another dimension, so they're not quite exactly what you would think they were from Equestria. So, well, I mean, here's here, I mean, what the thing is that Hasbro wrote a fanfic and commissioned, you know. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's that's. <laughs> I mean, it sounds it sounds crazy, but it's their property, so it they can do whatever they want. We wrote this. We we wrote this, you know, crossover fic, and we want, uh, you know, and and we want to uh, see it realized by the same, you know, awesome people who make the show. Yep. You know, uh, uh, he who pays the piper picks the tune. That's how I see it. Absolutely. And I think that it turned out pretty well. Yeah, it turned out pretty well. The only problem I had was was Rainbow Dash. She wasn't. She wasn't as one as narcissistic as as driven as I, I would never ever see Rainbow Dash in a cheerleader outfit unless you forced her to do it. And there wasn't like this little scene of her being upset about being put into a rainbow uh, into a cheer costume. That's uh, if, if they just did that one little scene <laughs> of Rainbow Dash just being put out by being put in the cheer, cheer outfit, it'd have been fine. <laughs> but she was a little too cheery. About being put in a girly cheerleader outfit, just a little bit too too uh, too into it for me. Hey, I, I I thoroughly the enjoyed I had, it. The only problem I have with the whole movie <laughs> is it. <laughs> I I don't think I had any problems. I actually really enjoyed it. the music. Was catchy, music especially was awesome. the the cheer. The cheer alone would just sold me. I loved that song. The music was awesome. Uh, I like how they start slapping the trays. Yes, it, when they like stomp and everything and gain everyone hyped, I was just like, "Oh, here it comes." <laughs> yeah. That was uh, that that whole sequence was Sibsies, by the way. Oh, nice! Oh, that's that awesome! Song. Yeah, sweet. Um, sorry, I'm just gathering myself. I'm just oh, losing it today. Um, where did I this, put you? This fan is just blowing hot air on me. <laughs> you need a Dyson. That's what you need. Says the guy working at a future shop that sells these things. <laughs> um, oh, so from Bot117, question for all. What was your favorite money? Uh, what, is your, what, what is your most favorite moment or favorite memory at any convention you've been to? <sighs> Way too many. Oh. I've been to way too many conventions. Yeah. <laughs> I think my favorite moment of all <clears throat> was when we came, when we arrived for the first time. Like not for the first time, but we when we first arrived at Everfree Northwest last year, and I walked in and saw just people camped out, sitting on the floor. It's Thursday. It was the Thursday before, and people were checking into the hotel, mm -hmm. and I saw them just camped out you know, sprawled everywhere, playing pony songs on their guitar. And I just was, I was blown away. Like, oh my God, all these people are here. Um, like we, we built it and they really came. Mm -hmm. That was like, like the most amazing moment. And to see that many like-minded people in one place was just, it, it, it just floored me. It was wonderful. 
I really have to echo that. Just being in a chair um, and working on this year round, and finally having the weekend come, and the moment that it hits you, it, it, it just it all came together. And there's over a thousand people here for the event you put on, so they can all have the best time of their lives. Mm-hmm. Just the joy <laughs> to bring everyone else. Is that that's the joy that I am. It's uh, I, I've really, I've been going to conventions for a very very long time, and I've pretty, I've pretty much forgotten more conventions <laughs> than I can remember. Um, but one of the very first conventions I ever went to, in fact, it was the very first convention I ever went to, um, was right across the street from Disneyland. And uh, I drove, I had driven my pickup truck 46 straight hours from Michigan to Long Beach, California to, to go to this thing. And it was my very first time west of you know, the north-south Michigan-Florida border. I'm like maybe 19 years old, and I'm like on the other end of the country. I'm in the middle of middle of California. I've always wanted to be to California ever since I was like seven years old and watched Chips on TV, right? It's like, oh my God, I'm driving the 405. I'm, <coughs> Ponch drove the 405. Oh my God, I'm going nuts, right? It's, it's nothing about the convention itself. It was about being independent and being away from you know, your safety net, being away from, you know, you, now it's like it's do or die. You're either going to have a great time and you're going to survive or you're going to blow all your money and be stuck in California. <laughs> LA, LA, <laughs> yeah. LA will do that to you. Yeah. So it was basically, it was, it was that, that, that buzz, that, that edge where, wow, if I really screw up, I'm boned. <laughs> what, con, what con was it, if, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, it was Conference 3. Wow. Yeah. Man, Way that's back. like, just like having gone there is like a collector's item. Yeah, that's like 1991. Please tell me it was, pl- please tell me it was awesome. Oh, it was, it was, you know, it was, it was awesome from the point of it was like a really small pony con. It was like, it was just beginning. It was maybe three to 500 people. And that's pretty good for back then. Yeah, for back then, that was pretty good. <clears throat> and I had met a very good friend of mine, Mick Collins, who from the Dirt Bombs. He was from Detroit. I had driven out there. He had flown. And we were both from Detroit, and we meet each other in freaking Long Beach, California. How pff, the, the, the odds that that would happen. So, yeah, it, it, you, I met some lifelong friends at that convention because I drove my truck cross-country. I just decided to go do it. And I've met lifelong friends doing it. And... And that's pretty much the thing that, that, that really gets me going to convention is that you'll meet people that will end up becoming lifelong friends if you let them. So open up your heart and meet people and have a great time because you never know what's going to happen. You know, at, at that point, Mick was basically in a three-piece band in Detroit. And now Mick Collins, if you look up the Dirt Bombs on YouTube, you'll find out <laughs> a lot about Mick Collins. So, yeah, and he's a friend of mine, and you never know what's going to happen in your life unless you meet, meet, meet these people and have a great time and open your heart. So um, go, to, go to a convention and just have a great time. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, it, where did I put you? There you uh, So this one is from Imperius for Dusty. Uh, how, much, how much weight have you lost since you started going to the gym? Um, I started at 260, and I'm at two. 42 right now right on so awesome. yeah, I actually i regressed a little bit i was actually in the high 230s um for a while and then the stress of the show and the stress of a couple of, th- of work and a couple of things i actually did go to the gym for about a month um uh, and i felt really bad about it and then jack's jack's blade got on me and said dusty dusty what are you doing and i said okay 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 stop beating on me and I started up again with the bicycle and some stretching and some other stuff. I've got some yoga things I'm going to start trying. So hopefully by midwinter, I'll be back down to my 235. So, which is where I'm really happy is right between 230 and 235. So, uh, still working. Still working on it. It's going to be a lifelong challenge to, to control your weight, especially at this age. You know, you get up here and it's very much more difficult to, to you lose it or gain it. It's easier to gain, harder to lose. So uh, keep working. Mm-hmm. So this one's K, uh, from KPNY Hardcover. Uh, question for everyone. Uh, which is your favorite next-gen console coming out? Um, you know what? I, st- I stopped playing console 
a long time ago. I mean, uh, I think the last console game I bought was Rock Band Metallica. Wow. Yeah. So I have an Xbox 360 and a PlayStation 2 upstairs in a box that has been shuffled around three different storage lockers ever since I unplugged them five years ago. And I've never had the want to actually plug them back in. I'm too busy with having an awesome life to sit down and, and console game. It's, it's just not really my thing anymore. So I have played uh, I have played a few of the uh, uh, other games. Like I tried uh, some stuff on Steam, but again, it just didn't hold my interest. I think I'm, I'm sort of over console games right now. Something really, really good is going to have to come out to drag me back into console gaming. I just haven't seen anything that really floats my boat. Well, then you might want to check this out um, because I just heard of a, a console that's coming out, I believe, later on this year, um, the Nintendo 64. And I know I'm definitely going to get one. Um, I think I've even found a way to plug it into my VCR. Hmm. Uh, I'm, I, I'm super hyped for it, and I really want to get Mario Kart 64. I love the one on the Super Nintendo. I'm really, really hyped. When I was really huge into console gaming, I had a Genesis. Oh, man. Represent. And I was playing Sonic a lot. <laughs> oh, man. I suck at Sonic so hardcore. <laughs> Sonic was like... Yeah. I, I was more into... Like, I have to say that, like, I was into Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, but all the, co the comics, the show, and the games, wow. like, probably... Uh, just as much as I'm into ponies now, if not more so. So, you know, you know, Mark, Mark Aaron, uh, you know how much, how far back I go to represent? Amiga, how far? Amiga One Thousand. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. You know, my, the first, well, the first computer we ever had in the house was when my mom borrowed a Mac Classic. But wow. my dad worked for IBM uh -huh. uh, and uh, brought home a PC XT or PCAT wow. um, with DOS on it. Yeah, when I was when I was in high school, we had trash eighties with dual five and a, five and a half. It was five and a half, five and a quarter floppy. I can't remember. Five and a quarter. Five and a quarter. Thank you. So we had dual five and a quarter trash eighties, and just as I was graduating high school, we had moved up to Apple two E's. That's what we. That was, those are the first computers I ever used in school. Yeah. I was like, okay, that that basically. Are, are, are we making you, Are we making you feel old, Bachati? I'm just gonna crawl back into the room. Just crawl back in the room, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Uh, uh, so this one is from uh, Parasol. Our question is, who is best pony? <laughs> oh, God. This one again. <laughs> the feud begins. Oh, this old chestnut. This old chestnut here. Actually, I haven't got that one in ages. <laughs> yeah, because I keep telling you not to ask it. I still stand. <laughs> is, this, is this question for everybody? Yes. Every you. Yeah. Yes. I'll always stand by my first answer. Yeah. Sweetie bot, come on. <laughs> so we're going we're going Fanon and Cannon, are we? Oh. Okay then I don't mind is. What? Fluff uh fluff fluff fluffle puff. <laughs> oh my god. I I would have to agree. Right now at this point, this very point, Flufflepuff is best pony. This because is just you know the what? best. Because you know what? I cannot get Pink fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows out of my head. I just can't. Oh, oh yeah. You know what I'm surprised more people in the community have not seen. What? Um, have you seen that um, Neon Pegasus video? That song? No. I oh my gosh. I have to look it up after. After. Uh, yeah, it's, I think it's just called Neon Pegasus, but it's. I'll write that down. It's, it's it's like it's like Bronies meets Weeble stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bajati. I love you. Actually, that's me. Is that you? <laughs> the corn's dancing on rain. <clears throat> yes, nice love it. <laughs> it's too <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's been stuck in my head at work all yeah. day. Absolutely. All I, day. I'm surprised you didn't put it up uh, on every TV in the in the whole department. <laughs> oh my god, I'm totally doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally doing that. <laughs> Uh, uh, I could get fired. We'll be, we'll be back in two <laughs> weeks when Screwball has plenty of time because he's gotten fired. <laughs> Next. Uh, so, oh, where did I put you again? <laughs> oh, man. 
I am roasting. Um, so this one is from Sergeant Brony. Uh, uh, Dusty, what's your favorite beer? And I'll actually put that for everyone. What's your favorite beer? Oh, geez. I, I flip-flop on beer. You, know, you can't have beer. Why? I'm why? I'm, I'm I'm a I'm a a lager kind of guy. So basically, if it's a lager and it's got a nice crisp, clean taste, I'll drink it. Um, I'm not much into overly chewy beers or beers that are trying to be things that they're not. You know, I don't like you know Bavarian you know wheat beer. Blah blah blah. Just give me a beer I can drink. You know. In that vein, mine mine isn't exactly very impressive or exotic. I'm a Corona guy. I love Corona Extra. Lime or not? Oh, with the lime, of course. But Ooh, again, that's that's apparent. Apparently, that's a that's a really gringo thing. But I still love it. It is. But they... I say I'm a, a rather unique twenty-one year old, and I'm a bit of a beer snob. <gasps> I'm just I don't go for the cheap stuff and, and go crazy every Friday night like the rest of my friends do. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think as far as types go, the IPAs are up there. Ever since I visited a brewery myself. Uh-huh. But it's so hard to say. Ooh. Jesus, Pajati. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I kind of got obsessed with the, the, the smell and taste of pops and malt, so IPAs are definitely up there for me. Um, as far as uh, brand goes, if you haven't tried the uh, Portland local Rogue beers, holy crap. Now, are, is this, can, just can you promise me that when you get a full sleeve tattoo, um, that it's, it's pony related? <laughs> I, I got a start going. I got a whole shoulder. So. I can promise you this, yes. <laughs> I actually had oh a my dream. Gosh, it's me, my dad. I just had a dream the other night of having a full body tattoo of like one of the posters for My Little Pony. <laughs> oh, that'd be painful. No way would I do. Then you wake up and realize that like. You were drunk when you got it, and it ended up being Equestria Girls all over your body. <laughs> you know what? I'd say yes to that. <laughs> Next. Uh, um, where did I put you? <laughs> There's always so many I have to constantly keep reading through. Um, fudge cakes. I'm so out of it right now. Just out of it. Damn this heat. Yeah, seriously. God. <laughs> uh, so this one is from Heart Healer. Question for all. Pony dreams. Any of you had an MLP relayed dream in which you were a pony or interacted with any of the other characters? Well, you know, I actually keep a dream journal. Um, or I did, for a number of, I, I did for a number of months. So let me do a string search really quick. And I'm not, I'm not kidding. I'm serious about that. Do it. Uh, I know I've got a couple where there's definitely ponies in there, but I, I couldn't remember them for the life of me. I can remember one where I was basically a blacksmith in Ponyville, and all I was doing was working out other people's carts. And I can't remember any interaction with any pony. I was just working. <laughs> I was like just building carts or fixing wheels or fixing stuff. And I don't remember any actual interactions. It was just basically work. So I think it was actually a stress work dream more than it was anything. <laughs> <laughs> that was really fun, though. I think I only know like the, the kind of subject around mine. It was very similar to like a, a, a portal puzzle, mm. and Flo Dash was there, and part of the puzzle was was saving her from probably the acid that, that you know from the first portal game. But beyond that, I wish I knew more details. Mm. Uh, I did find one. Okay. It didn't involve it didn't involve me being a pony or like Equestria or, or ponies per se, but I dreamt that there was another smaller brony convention in Seattle. Mm-hmm. Um, and it said I, I wrote here they had a paltry five vendors. Oh. Um, mm. and that was it. Interesting. So yeah, I I, uh, I, I, w- I would gently recommend to those who want to start a, a pony convention to, to to find a different city. <laughs> We got you. Hey, Shrewy. Yeah. It's that time of night. It's that time of day. Oh, oh no. Yes. We're about no. The, we're about the end of the program. No. Yes. <laughs> so find that one awesome question that I know you've been holding on to, and <coughs> give it to me. 
I've been holding on this one for a while. Um, this one is actually also from James Justice. I'm not screaming. God forgive me, I'll faint. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, a question for all. Um, he, he quotes, uh, Kanye West once said, I guess every superhero needs his theme music. What would you consider to be your theme music and why? Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> sounds like you got one. <laughs> oh, I've had one. Think. I've had one. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Um, Everybody else go first. Yeah. Well, I take this question really seriously. It's gonna be difficult. Come on, maybe even like, what's one song that you just love and you just like? If you could just like. Hey, suddenly an action scene or suddenly some kind of scene's going on and this music just pops right then and there in the background. Everyone can hear and you're like, yep, this is my moment to shine. <laughs> oh my God, that's a hard question. Um, I know it's not because the problem is like, the first thing I think of is really depressing. I'm like, that isn't, that's not theme music. I <laughs> <laughs> have a battle theme, but I know a song that really kind of speaks to me uh, I think shows my nature quite a bit. Um, but my favorite band, Pavishin, uh Alleyway, would be part of that. That's pretty good. Um, I think Still by Ben Folds. Okay. Shaft. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Sucker. <laughs> yes. Hmm. You know what? That's very nice. Right? Yeah. See, what, what, I need, what I need is a boombox. I'm going to give it to Screwball, and I'm going to walk through Everfree Northwest with Shaft playing. And Screwball's going to have it over his head walking behind me the entire time. <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be awesome. <laughs> you know what? I, th I think I know what mine is. Mine would probably be... Um... <laughs> I saw this coming. <laughs> Oh my god, yes. Okay, that, that hurt me. <laughs> and with that... You wound me, sir. And with that, we're done. <laughs> we, we're can't, done. We, cannot, we, cannot, we cannot go any better than that. So, now is the time of the evening when I get to call out all the wonderful, awesome pieces of original content that we have here on Everfree Network for you to come watch every week. We start out on Mondays with this show every other week. That's Stay Burning, my friends. You're right here right now. We'll be back in two weeks after Everfree Northwest. But QDR Crusaders is Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. The CAC find the best in that we have in the art field here in this fandom and discuss it, tear it down, and show you exactly why it's so awesome. And then, uh, let's see, KPNY premieres Wednesday, July 3rd at 5 p.m. Pacific Time, 8 p.m. Eastern, and that is a radio drama where the ponies of Equestria discover the Earth's internet and us, the bronies, and KPNY being the only radio station outside of Ponyville, deem it their duty to inform <coughs> Equestria of this new discovery, and they call the show The Inventory. Hilarity will ensue. So check that out. That sounds uh, awesome. Equestria Inquirer, Wednesdays, the bi-weekly. They're on a bi-weekly like we are. Uh, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern on Wednesdays. Their next show will be July 10th. Uh, Into the Spotlight with Osaka Jack. Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern, where Osaka finds all those really great bronies that don't quite get the spotlight they deserve and gives them some. So, uh, Sketchy Sounds, live songcast, is Thursdays, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. Why is it so early? Because he's overseas, and that's the best time for him. Uh, he will play his guitar for you. Uh, and uh, you just have to tell him what you want to hear, and he'll play it for you. Post my video with Jay Holler and Bvids Thursdays, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, where they talk all about the PMBs that are in our great fandom. Uh, Brony Breakdown with Saber Spark and Paleo, Thursdays, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Everybody loves the Brony Breakdown. Those guys do a wonderful job breaking down everything that happens in our fandom every week. Lunar Republic Takeover <coughs> on the radio side, Fridays, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Nightmare Moon will play all of your requests on the radio side. Then Mixology with DJ One Trick, Saturdays, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. I believe it's still on Saturday. Might be on Sundays. I have to double, double check the schedule on everfree.net. Uh, Saturday Night Songs with Michelle Kreber, Saturdays, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. 
when they have time to come on, and uh, usually Final Draft is with them at that time. Blue Screen Bronies, Sundays, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, where the Blue Screen Bronies talk all about the gaming of what's going on. They'll talk about Xbox One, they'll talk about all that stuff, you know. And then Pegasus Sisters Live, Sundays, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern, the <coughs> Pegasus Sisters have a new member. Check it out. So, that is all the wonderful original content you can see right here on every network. And with that, we're at the end. I want to thank the guys from Everfree Northwest, Bajate and Makarian, who are here. And uh, Amy, my wonderful girlfriend. Kerdwin for helping me put all of this stuff together. Cowboy Dave for making us look so good on the YouTubes. Draco, who's going to be doing it this week, because Cowboy Dave is flying to Everfree Northwest. Um, then Canterlotcon for basically saying, Hey, Dusty, come up to Toronto. Let's have a great time. Uh, Sack Brony Expo for doing the same thing. And then Screwy. Screwball, love my screwball. And all of you people out there for coming and watching us every week when we have wonderful things to talk about. With that, we're done. It's over. Okay. How are you doing, guys? Ah, uh, melting. What melting. a world. Melting, me too. Right. Wow. Yep. Melting. Okay. Melting. Be Beej, you're still in you're still in Austin, aren't you? Yes. I'm in Austin for the the University of the East, and then I'll be back. How, when when is your when do you actually get in? Back to Seattle? Uh, I don't know yet. <laughs> That's right. You're just like you go where the uh, the, the wind buddy. of that of that card takes you. Um, but there's a good chance early tomorrow morning. Okay. When are you checking in? Hey, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna. Let me close out the freaking show before you yeah, start yeah. talking. Thank you so much. <laughs> We're still on camera here. Are we still? Okay. We're still on camera. So, hey, say goodbye. Lord, Goodbye, guys. God, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you this weekend, guys. If you're going to Free Northwest, we'll see you there. If not, then we'll see you in two weeks. And our wonderful guest will be from the comic book side. So, if you like comic books, come on back and we'll talk to them. Comics. Do not miss this con, you guys. Do not miss this con if you can make it. So we'll catch you later. Ciao. Du, 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 du. Good, Good night, night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. We hate to leave you, but we'll be back soon. Good night. Sweetheart, good night. Good night, sweetheart, good night.